bit about myself. My name is Mary Bryant. I was in small animal practice for about nine years. I've been very involved in the leadership of the profession with AVMA, my state VMAs. And for about 14 years, I've taught a career development class to veterinary students at the University of Pennsylvania. My day job, I work for Mariel. When I'm interviewing applicants, and I've hired a lot of veterinarians, the number one question I get is, what are you looking for? Students ask me this too. And my sarcastic answer is, I'm looking for a normal human being. <laughs> Low bar. Let me explain. All of us know someone could be a friend or a classmate, our boss, and they could be a good veterinarian. They could be a great veterinarian, but they're never going to be that star performer. And sometimes we defend them a little bit, right? Because they're our friends. And we say, you know, I know they're a little quirky, but you know what? They're really smart. Well, here's how I figure it. You went to four years of college. You went to four years of veterinary school. You graduated. You're smart. Your IQ is quite high. Veterinarians are smart folks. So that's not what I'm looking for. I know you are smart. So what am I looking for? Self-awareness. Awareness of other people around you in situations, communication skills, people skills. The ability to establish a rapport easily and quickly. Don't just take my word for it, though. There are hundreds, hundreds of veterinary articles, surveys, that pretty much say this very thing. I'm talking about, I'm looking for emotional intelligence. The scary thing is, IQ explains very little of one's achievements, and it does not determine who succeeds and who fails. Students really don't like that message. It has very little to do with what we learned in school. In fact, it takes for granted that you already have the intellectual ability and technical know-how to do your job. That is baseline and expected. Instead, it focuses on personal qualities, initiative, empathy, adaptability, communication skills, the ability to persuade, and something as simple as having a good attitude, a positive attitude. It's that old adage, too much college, too little kindergarten, right? These personal qualities, they are twice as important as IQ plus your technical skills combined. The first book I ever read about this was by Daniel Goleman, and he surveyed hundreds of employers and thousands of employees, and he found what makes some employees that star performer was emotional intelligence. It's actually found that IQ and EI are inversely proportional. Study after study shows this. What's impressive is that Job success is predicted by IQ 6% of the time, while EI predicts job success 45% of the time. So who here graduated before the year 2000? Great. So how many credit hours did you have in some of these classes when you were in vet school? Social skills, anybody? Credits and social skills. Well. I have some good news. The good news is that while your IQ is genetically fixed, it changes very little over your lifetime. EI is largely learned, and there are hundreds of sources where you can learn to improve your EI. There are books, there are websites. You can hire an executive coach, find out where maybe you have opportunity to grow your emotional intelligence. So here's my advice. My advice is the next time you go to a conference just like this one, Skip the brain surgery lecture. <laughs> Skip the swine endocrinology. You're smart. You're, you have a very high IQ or we wouldn't all be sitting in this room. Think about taking a class or two that might help you improve your emotional intelligence and then you will be on your way to becoming that star performer. Thank you.